What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. I've had the Core i7 iMac for a little over a week and a half and during that time I've had a lot of questions asking how it performs. Thought the best way to sort of show its performance uh, was to run a full battery of benchmarking tests. So I downloaded and purchased Geekbench. We're going to run this thing through it and see how it comes out. Let's get started. Alright, so before we run the benchmark, let's review the specs of the computer. So it is running Mac OS X version 10.6.4, which is currently the most updated version. It's got an Intel Core i7 processor clocked to 2.93 GHz. It's got 8 GB of DDR3 RAM. Uh, the startup disk where all the, the applications and the OS is stored is on a 256 GB solid state drive. The computer is also equipped with a 2 TB 7200 RPM spinning drive. Let's go ahead and check out the graphics. Uh, it is equipped with an ATI Radeon 5750 video card. So as I mentioned, I purchased Geekbench. We're going to go ahead and run these tests in 64-bit and 32-bit configurations. 64-bit uh, should probably be the most accurate. A lot of the applications and the OS itself is 64-bit. However, some things are still 32, and I thought people might want to see what that was going to look like. So we are going to run both of these tests. 64-bit, uh, I think, should probably be the most accurate. But let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the 32-bit. We're going to go ahead and run the test right here, and I'll explain uh, what all of these things mean as well. So we're going to go ahead and run the benchmark. And as it gives us a result, sort of I'll go through and talk about what each thing means. Uh, but I just want to sort of show what the overall score was in 32, and I'll sort of analyze the 64-bit scores. You can see right here, Geekbench is running. It runs pretty quickly. All we have open right now is a screen recording program I'm using called Screenium. I have one Firefox window open, and my external monitor is connected. Everything else is closed. Uh, so it shouldn't be a too taxing application for the program to run. All right, so here is the full Geekbench score. Uh, of 8,543. Now, this is a 64-bit operating system, 32, um, it's not really optimized for, so this isn't the most uh, accurate test. Uh, but in case people were wondering what the 32-bit test was, uh, here is the result for that. Let's go ahead and now jump to the 64-bit test, and we'll go ahead and analyze that as well. Let's go ahead and open this up. We'll do the same thing. It should take the same amount of time to run. So go ahead and run benchmarks. So it's going to give us an overall performance. It's going to talk about integer performance, floating point performance, memory performance, stream performance, uh, and a few others. And I'll talk about sort of what each of those are. So it's going to measure first integer performance, and that benchmarks measure integer performance by measuring a variety of processor-intensive tasks that make heavy use of integer operations. So I'm just pretty much running a bunch of processes in the background. Uh, and here is the score coming in at 9,076. Oh, which is actually a bit lower than uh, I've seen on other tests that I've run this on. Uh, I've just had a bit over 10,000 um, when I ran this test a few minutes ago, so it seems to be the, the range varies. Uh, so here is the overall score. Here's the uh, integer performance we talked about. Here's the floating point performance, memory, and stream. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, we've got a 7,737 for processor integer, which we just talked about. Uh, floating point, we have a score of 13,925, and floating point benchmarks measure floating point performance by performing a variety of processor-intensive tasks and heavy use of floating point operations. So there's that. Uh, memory performance, uh, 5,144. Uh, memory benchmarks measure not only the performance of the underlying memory hardware, but also the performance of the functions provided by the operations system used to manipulate memory. And we've got uh, stream performance, that final one that came in at 4,663. Uh, stream benchmarks measure both floating point performance and sustained memory bandwidth. So that is what the 64-bit uh, um, test comes in at. Let's run it one more time and see if we get a higher or lower score to show if there is any sort of fluctuation uh, in the score. Perhaps it will be lower and it will be higher. And also we'll talk about some other uh, computers and how this compares with some Geekbench scores. So let me go ahead and uh, quit this, and we'll try it one more time. Run the 64-bit test and see if we get sort of any different score. So go ahead and run the benchmark, and we'll see if there's any different. I think it's important to run a test at least twice to see what, I guess, the uh, you know, standard deviation or margin of error uh, may be. So we had a score of a uh, little over 9,000 last time. We'll see if it comes in any higher this time. We're about halfway done uh, with the Geekbench score. 
And if you do want to buy the software to run this, uh, it's about $20. So we got uh, just about the same score. Looks to be pretty accurate, uh, 9,628. So let's see how this stacks up to some other scores and other uh, computers that have been benchmarked. Let's go ahead and bring in uh, a window here that talks about it. So these are people that have published their Geekbench results. These are all pretty recent. Uh, so we've got a MacBook, an older MacBook, late 2006 with a uh, Intel Core, looks like a Core 2 Duo 1.3, came in at 2,747. Uh, here is an iMac with a Core i5, um, so a pretty, pretty uh, recent one here a 2.63 gigahertz processor, uh, 6,874. Uh, here's a late 2010 uh, MacBook Pro with a Core 2 Duo 2.4, 3,000. Uh, here's some other tests. Here's an iMac with, uh, looks like two core, two processors, 12 cores. Um, oh, this is a Mac Pro, rather. Came in at a whopping score of 30,000. Uh, we we'll could keep going down here. We have another Mac Pro, another 30,000. Uh, we can go ahead and browse the most recent results, and we'll see if we have any other scores here. So here's an iMac A5, i5 we talked about. Uh, here's another uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, here's a Lenovo with a Core i7. Uh, so another Core i7 on a Lenovo, don't know if it's a laptop or desktop. Uh, this is run, it was running Windows 32-bit, uh, 4,591. I've got a VirtualBox machine here uh, with an i7 chip, came in at 3,000. Uh, we've got a few other scores, so we'll keep continuing uh, down. We've got a MacBook Pro 13-inch, early 2010, 3,000. Uh, here's a Mac Pro with a 16,000 score. Uh, here's a Hackintosh with a 5,000 score. You can go ahead, and there are a lot of these. You can go to uh, browse.geekbench.ca. You can get a lot of uh, these scores in case you're curious. So this is how uh, the iMac stacked up. Its test was uh, pretty solid. A uh, 9,000 is a relatively decent number. Uh, it's fast. You can sort of see how the integer selections shape up here. Uh, this is uh, my computer, and this is sort of what some of the competition has been doing, or an average, I suppose. Uh, you can see that it's uh, pretty strong, considering it's a newer computer. You'd expect uh, relatively strong results. I'll go ahead and keep scrolling down so you can see all these. In case you guys are into Geekbench scores, uh, you can sort of analyze these uh, on your own. Uh, so this was the uh, total score here. I'll be running another test using this um, in Windows. I've installed the Windows 7 Home Premium uh, via Boot Camp, and we'll see how this steps up and compares on the Windows side. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this Geekbench score. I'll be doing a ton of other tests on the iMac. We'll be doing some SSD tests and see how the solid state drive improves things uh, or hinders things uh, as well. So I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you or talk to you in the next video.